House of the Dragon, baby. You know why you clicked the video. It's time to break things down. Expectations for House of the Dragon vary wildly amongst fans, and whilst the new trailer may not be all that much to go on, I thought it would be interesting to compare it to the original Game of Thrones trailer to see if there's anything we can make of it. Let's get into it. The original Game of Thrones trailer is pretty slow-paced and is packed with exposition and choice bits of dialogue. Take the very first line. I, Eddard, the House Stark, Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North, sentence you to die. This immediately provides insights with regards to character, location, style and tone of the show. For House of the Dragon though, it's more vague, with higher tempo and one-liners. History does not remember blood. A one-liner that doesn't tell us much. And not only that, but it's also contradictory to established Westerosi lore, seeing how people are remembered in songs and stories even when their names are forgotten. Gods, kings, fire, and blood. What is this brief mortal life, if not the pursuit of legacy? And I find this a bit troubling, because it sets quite an ambiguous tone to the show as opposed to the more substantial bit from Game of Thrones. But to be fair to the pursuit of legacy, it is a big deal in Westerosi culture. I mean, it was basically Tywin Lannister's entire character, and he is remembered quite fondly, so there's that. It's also nice to see the High Towers in action, and on the topic of legacy, perhaps we'll see more of Old Town and the Citadel, which could entail some really interesting intrigues with regards to the writing of history. The dialogue where the lords of Westeros swear fealty to Viserys and Rhaenyra is a little strange. Less so because it's all chopped up for the trailer, but more so because it uses a very informal language that we're not used to from Game of Thrones. I, Bowman Baratheon, promise to be faithful to King Viserys and to his named heir, Princess Rhaenyra. Rhaenyra Targaryen. It doesn't contain any titles or fancy wording, as well as mentioning the heir, which kind of takes me out of it a little bit. Then there's the elephant in the room, which would be the talk of virtue signaling potentially getting in the way of solid storytelling, again, with things like emphasizing female empowerment. Men would sooner put the realm to the torch than see a woman ascend the Iron Throne. Which may be neither here nor there, but it stands out as being a topic that could easily get oversaturated, much like how it got towards the end of Game of Thrones. The difference here, however, is that whether women should be allowed to ascend the Iron Throne or not is an actual theme in Fire and Blood, so it certainly belongs in the show. I can't help but think that it's a little bit funny though that Daenerys goes on to literally put the realm to the torch in order to ascend the Iron Throne, but that's besides the point. Let's just hope that it's handled gracefully in the end. It's not much to go on, but Daemon is instantly framed as a bad guy, with menacing angles of him looking grim plus a shot of his angry face right after Rhaenyra is named heir. Perhaps this is all a ruse to make us think he is the bad guy only for them to drop a plot twist later on, but in any case, there are no redeeming shots or comments to blur the lines, which is a shame. Even in the Game of Thrones trailer, Ned Stark starts out by cutting off a dude's head, which looks harsh, but he's also portrayed as a good guy when he questions the decision to kill Daenerys, for example. We commit murder on the word of this man. I showed the trailer to a few newcomers to the story, and some of them thought the trailer came across as a civil war between men and women, or some sort of feminist revolution with Daemon leading the bad guys, which of course is not the case. Now, giving up too much plot is a common problem with trailers, but here we're almost seeing the opposite, and if people get the wrong idea, that's got to be considered a trailer failure. Also, this approach doesn't accommodate newcomers, which they'll want to do, not only because there are weirdos out there who haven't watched Game of Thrones, but most importantly to make the story stand on its own. Then there's the closing statement. Dreams didn't make us kings. Dragons did. Compare that to the original Game of Thrones trailer where good old Bobby B goes, Getting his honor is keeping the peace. It's fear. Fear and blood. Which, first and foremost, is a character interaction and actually hints at a dynamic and complicated world. Whereas, dreams didn't make us kings, dragons did, is more of a power statement about ambition and doesn't hint at much at all. And is it really a Game of Thrones trailer if there isn't a dragon screeching at the end? 
The only thing missing is someone popping up to say, I think he likes you. So if the trailer is anything to go on, it looks very good for what that's worth. Casting looks solid, apart from the lore-breaking Valerians, and if they give us as much violence and CGI as the trailer suggests, we could be in for a real treat with some awesome battles taking place. However, it has to be said that the intrigue and betrayals is what's really appealing about this story, so hopefully they'll focus on that more so than battles and CGI. Okay, so all in all, the new trailer doesn't let us know much of what the series is going to be about, which is a bit of a shame, since it doesn't seem very welcoming for newcomers to the world of Game of Thrones. Some obvious themes like ambition and intrigue are communicated, which is fair enough, but it's still quite a bit vaguer than the original trailer for Game of Thrones. Whether that's telling or not remains to be seen. To be completely honest, I was a little underwhelmed with the trailer, but in any event, I'm really excited about the show. I've got tons of coverage lined up for The House of the Dragon as well as more OG Game of Thrones content, so I hope you'll all stick around for the discussions to come. Thank you all for your continued support, it really means a lot to me, and as always, thank you very much for watching.